good evening wherever you're joining us from to watch our TV news. I'm Ethan Tashoya. Now, we're quite going to look at a very uh, uh, not unique topic, but one that we look at every other year, which is you know, looking at Rwanda's liberation journey, where we've come from, where we are, and where we're headed. Now, we should remember that 26 years ago, Rwanda was experiencing one of the worst genocides in history that lost, uh, rather left over a million lives dead. On July 4th, 1994, uh, Rwanda was officially liberated by the Rwanda Patriotic Front, RPF, and the nation has since experienced a turnaround in its politics and other sectors that has left the country all the same. Now, as Rwanda prepares for Kwibohora 26, we take a look at Rwanda's liberation journey thus far, and the country's politics in relation to the uh, Rwanda or the future we want for that matter. You can be part of this discussion uh, through our Twitter handle, which is at RBA uh, Rwanda, or also follow the discussion live via our online platforms, our website, uh, rba.co.rw slash TV, and our YouTube channel, which is Rwanda TV. I'm not alone in this discussion, and I'm joined by you know, legislators, but who are also seasoned politicians. And on my immediate left, uh, Honorable uh, Francesca Tengela, who is a member of parliament, but also a member of the ruling RPF in Otani. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'm also joined by uh, MP Frank Habineza, who also happens to be the president of Democratic Green Party of Rwanda, an opposition uh, political organization. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And if we are able to connect uh, from the studio, uh, via Skype, we'll be able to speak to Jacques Aigamba, who is also a genocide survivor and a consultant in human rights and development. Remember, you can be part of this discussion through our uh, online channels. And thank you indeed for joining us. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, plus Jacques Aigamba, who is online, uh, joining us from London uh, for being part of this discussion. I hope you had a good weekend. Yes. Now, we'll look, be looking at different uh, parts of uh, Rwanda's uh, political uh, uh, spectrum. And uh, we're looking at uh, the constitution itself. We're looking at Rwanda's political choices. We're looking at where we are, uh, but also trying to make sense of Rwanda's liberation journey. Uh, 26 years ago, we saw um, armed liberation struggle. But we've moved beyond that to... to um, economic struggle, to making sure that uh, the people are being liberated from poverty, from an um, uh, unworthy uh, mindset, if I may call that. Uh, so let, let me start uh, by uh, you, uh, uh, Madam uh, Francesca Tengera, who is also part of the ruling party. Looking back at the 26 years of Rwanda and the vision we've had as a country, how effective is Rwanda's political ideology in delivering Rwanda to the nation uh, that we want? Thank you. Uh, Rwanda's political ideology includes so many uh, sections, but if uh, we think of, uh, we first think of the uh, past, uh, we look at what happened before 1994. We chose, first of all, the unity and reconciliation of Rwandans, and that's a very big pillar that Rwanda builds upon. The, when you talk of the unity and reconciliation, definitely you think there wasn't any unity. There wasn't unity in Rwanda. There wasn't unity amongst Rwandans, and that led to genocide against Tutsi. So, who are the, one of the ideologies that Rwanda chose to move forward is to un, unify all Rwandans from different walks of life, and that's one of the RPF ideologies, as I belong to the ruling party, as you said. We have to accommodate, uh, Rwandans decided to accommodate each and every person, leaving no one behind, because if Rwanda is to be built, it will be built de uh, depending on the strength, on the thoughts, on the, on, uh, uh, on the thoughts of every Rwandan. So one of the choices we, uh, we made, one of the choices Rwanda made is unity and reconciliation. It is one of the pillars, it is one of the fundamental uh, principles in our constitution, as you mentioned about the constitution. So 
Once there wasn't unity, once there was a genocide against Tutsi, once there was uh, people saw themselves belonging to different groups of Rwandese, they never saw themselves as Rwandans. They saw themselves as Hutu, as Tutsi, as Twa. But today we look at ourselves as Rwandans, and it's one of the pillars that we are using to move forward to, to develop our country. There are also, based on that, there are also economic fundamentals, economic transformation, social transformation, and transformation of governance. Those are the choices that Rwanda made, and they are under the NST1, uh, the National Transformation Strategy for Rwanda. Yes. Uh, both of you are legislators, uh, lawmakers, and uh, I'm glad to actually have you at this particular time. <laughs> Looking at the laws that we had um, uh, before 1994, yes. the laws that we are having right now, do you think uh, they are in the right place or they are rightfully um, structured to deliver us, to, 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 to bring a distinction of the post-genocide and and, and the you know and the Rwanda that we want uh, for that matter. Well, thank you. Um, I think, of course, the laws we had um, before the genocide, uh, some some of them were not fair for all Rwandans. And I mean, uh, let's just first say, uh, look at the law punishing uh, the crime of genocide. We know that uh, the former government had uh, signed uh, the uh, is it a treaty? But they never ratified it. They never made it into law here in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So they just put on their signature, but they never uh, made it a local law here because they knew maybe they thought that they would do something. They didn't want to be punished for that. So, but uh, when the current government took over, that law was ratified. And, uh, and from that, we have also made many other laws uh, that uh, can punish the crime of genocide, but also uh, issues of discrimination have been also banned. And also the other laws that uh, talk about uh, genocide ideology. And um, some of them, of course, we have uh, criticized some of those laws, like especially that one of uh, genocide ideology. And the Minister have just uh, listened to most of our ideas, and they have revised that law to make it more practical. Because before, uh, it was not tangible. The issues of ideology were not tangible. Uh, anyone could be arrested. But now they quantified it, and they, they showed things that can can, 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 uh, can show someone that if someone has an ideology, like if you have done some actions or... Um, yeah, so basically I would say that uh, the laws we have now are much more uh, uh, tuned to the future that we want. And uh, of course, not that uh, we have all enough laws. That's why there's a parliament that has to be there to make more laws and uh, even to revise... Uh, existing, existing laws and so on, yeah. So there may be some challenges here and there, but I think uh, there's a political will to uh, make laws that will uh, govern Rwandans uh, properly. I'll, I'll go back to the, you know, the word choices she yes. mentioned while mm -hmm. starting. Uh, President Paul Kagame's speech during the 20th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi on April 7th, uh, 2014, he pointed out that what has led Rwanda's country uh, Rwanda's continued uh, progress was the choice of Rwandan's uh, people centered on the three choices Rwandans have made over the past um, years, which is staying together, uh, being accountable, and thinking big. Mm -hmm. How do you interpret uh, these choices? Yes. How do you interpret them? Thank you. First of all, I start with the thinking big. I briefly mentioned about thinking big, though I never mentioned the, big, the thinking big. Thinking big is to look, to have a vision, to see, to, to, uh, to, 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 to develop. Thinking big is to, looking at our, to look at our country and see where we came from, see where we want, what is our vision, how are we going to develop, and what ways are we going to use. So that is thinking big. We no longer want to, to, to think small. We think our country is small in size, in kilometer squared. Yeah. But we want to think bigger than the size of the land because uh, uh, the country is made up of people in, uh, first instead of the land. There are so many countries that are smaller than Rwanda, but they are 
really developed, they thought big before us, or they have opportunities that we don't have. But today we have opportunities. Probably if we get time, we shall mention of the opportunities we have later. But today we have opportunities that will help us to move forward, to develop despite the size, despite the problems we went through. Then if I can talk of the, uh, you said thinking big, uh, being accountable, being and accountable, staying together. staying together. I also mentioned about that the unity and reconciliation. Uh, when you look at Rwandans before, I mentioned it. Uh, they never had confidence in their leadership. They never had confidence in the in living here, in thinking that uh, they can be one person. They can think uh, as one people. Today. Uh, Rwandans are united. Of course, there are also challenges. If we get time, we shall talk of the challenges of unity and reconciliation. But at least today, a bigger percentage of Rwandans are thinking as one. And that's the unity he talked of. That's the, the, the way forward. The three choices we made, we must work together. We must be one. So as we must, think alike. we must think alike, we must work together if we are to achieve anything in this world, if we are to develop, if we are to forget what, uh, what happened in the past and then move forward. Then Is accountability. It, yeah, accountability. If I can uh, briefly go to accountability, I think you know it. We have institutions that were put in place uh, uh, to, 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 to help in that uh, uh, accountability that was mentioned by His Excellency. We have the Office of the Auditor General, we have the Ombudsman, we have the Public Procurement Authority, to mention but a few. Yeah. Uh, if you are in the office, for example, if you are a head of an institution, you have to be accountable. Uh, they give you the... the during the budget, uh, budgeting session, the institutions that get the budget from the government, they are given the budget, but you have to account for what you are given. Not only the budget, even the tasks you are given, you have to account, you have to tell people why you haven't achieved the task, the specific uh, task that is given to an institution. So, of course, the task goes with, uh, with the funds. So, there is no embezzlement that can be accommodated with Rwandans. You know, but they of always. It still happens. Uh, it happens. It happens, of course. You know, we are not yeah. angels. We don't live in heaven if it exists. Mm. We live on earth. We are still human beings. And there are still bad elements amongst us. And that's why there's that accountability. Those, uh, those are elements that uh, no longer see themselves as people who should move forward with us are the ones who are brought to, to law. Yeah. They, are, they are questioned, they are punished if it necessitates, they refund what they've embezzled, uh, and if they cannot deliver, they get off and other people come in to deliver. We'll take over. Yeah, uh, that's what Before I, I bring say. in Jacques Aigamba, allow me to, uh, you know, first of all, get uh, Frank Abinez's thoughts about working together. You're part of the, of the opposition especially for the government, because, um, um, but the opposition in Rwanda doesn't seem to be the opposition that is uh, being imagined uh, elsewhere across the world as we see it. Um, do you see Rwandans or the Rwandans political ideology being together? Do you work together? Is that, that unity of, 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 of staying together? Is there that choice, rather, of saying together, being accountable, and thinking big together as a unit? Well, um, thank you. Uh, in the fundamental principles, uh, as stated in uh, Article 10 of the Constitution, Rwanda committed itself to political pluralism. Political pluralism means that uh, um, the country accepts to have different political parties that have different ideas or ideologies. But of course, also in the same uh, Article 10, uh, there are things that uh, we, we as Rwandans have agreed that uh, we will not do politics based on discrimination of any kind of race, uh, ethnicity, 
or it's a color or region or legion or whatever. So basically, uh, those are some of the things that uh, we have that uh, shapes us differently from other countries because we have had the genocide against the Tutsi. Yeah. We also have another principle, I think it's principle number six, which talks about the consensus yes. building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so when you look into that, if, when you want to become a political party in Rwanda, so you, uh, when you merge, of course, uh, like we merged uh, as a party, um, uh, we did emerge uh, in a confrontational manner, let me say like that. Uh, but as we went on understanding, we understood that uh, um, being confrontational uh, is not uh, what the constitution uh, really wants, but what the constitution really accepts is having competition. So we do subscribe to the politics of competition and having different ideas, and also uh, we do have in the constitution a national forum for uh, a national constitutional forum for political parties or political organisations in Rwanda, which also uh, allows all political parties to sit together and discuss on some issues uh, concerning the country. So in the beginning, like we spent almost uh, two years when we were part, we had been yes, uh, we were not going to that forum because we had had a lot of information, a lot of uh, rumors that uh, people when parties go to the forum, they don't talk, that the RPF uh, takes do speaks alone. Do you talk? We when do. You, come there? you should ask your friends from RP and other news um, organizations, media organizations who come there. We do give our views different but, from but the RPF. But do you think, uh, you know, and, coming uh, together, you know, and, uh, sitting and, and even and our talking. views? Uh, they are respected. Even the political parties forum, yeah. one good thing is that we all even have equal numbers. The like RPF has four people, we also have four people, every, every political party has four people. So if you have a good idea, people will listen. If you don't have a good idea, no one will listen. So we do a challenge sometimes what RPF brings. Sometimes we do bring our own ideas and some people listen to them. So I say that uh, um, people outside, um, just say like where I was born in Uganda, they have a different uh, uh, kind of political spectrum because they never had a genocide. They just only had a war, uh, but they never had a genocide. So uh, they can afford to have a, even some divisions that mm -hmm. people can do politics based on, on the, that you are from this region or yeah. from this other, whatever. Even, even some religion, sometimes some people say we are Catholics and uh, they try to promote that. Uh, let's say like uh, one political party, uh, before, like the DP, Democratic Party in Uganda, they used to promote being Catholicism. Mm -hmm. So that if you are Catholic, you should vote for DP, and if you are like in the People's Congress, you should be a Protestant, things like that. Now it's seizing, but people still do believe in those kind of things. But here in Rwanda, we can't go into that, because we have seen where division has taken the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I would say that uh, we are together in one thing, in the unity and reconciliation. We are together in fighting against another genocide. We are together in transforming this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we can't, why can we be different when we want to have unity? Who wants to have his mother or his father being killed again or his children? No one wants that. Who wants to go back in the forest of Congo or Tanzania or wherever? Who wants to go there again? I don't think anyone wants to, do, to see that. So we are all united. We all want unity. We all want reconciliation. Maybe the mechanism to achieve that is what we don't agree on, what we differ yeah. on. So that's where we need to have different inputs to make sure that we all achieve our unity and reconciliation. We have maybe different approaches. Uh, like for us, we do think that we need to have more political pluralism, mm -hmm. to have more vibrancy, uh, different ideas that, and so especially on. Especially that vibrancy that you're talking about. Yeah, we that's, do. That's, uh, you that's, ask that's, my colleague here in yeah, Parliament. Yeah. I think she knows very well that if I don't agree on something, yeah. I will not uh, stomach it. I will say it and I will vote against it. And uh, we do even Parliament say different things. And I even sometimes even I see uh, other friends from these other parties, even from the ruling. They sometimes even oppose their own, some of the, the laws, and yeah. uh, so they vote for them. But at least they so give they, some different ideas here. Yeah. I think that's why we need to get it. Yeah. Let me bring in Jacques Gamba. Jacques Gamba, either you can you hear me? Jacques Gamba, either? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. My pleasure. I, I believe you've been following the conversation in the studio here, and uh, I, I, I want to get your understanding of, of the current, uh, Rwanda's current political ideology, vision, and the choices. What do you make of them? Well, uh, uh, as my colleagues have just stated, um, these choices should be regarded in the context uh, of our history. 
uh, most recent history, the, uh, after 1994, uh, our country uh, was in ruin, and um, uh, we had experienced the geno worst genocide over the last uh, the last century, uh, with uh, uh, over one million people dead, infrastructure demolished, the whole social fabric torn apart, and also. Uh, we had had uh, uh, over two million, two million of its citizens, citizens in uh, refugee camp in neighboring countries. So the cause of this was ethnic divisions, which uh, led to oppression and extermination of one section of the population. So it was paramount that uh, uh, His Excellencies underlined that staying together and avoid divisionism and the policies that uh, drove Rwanda to almost its own self annihilation uh, be avoided. But then uh, that's why we, uh, early on, the government promoted uh, the policies of uh, national unity and reconciliation, which is uh, always improved uh, by politics that uh, accommodate everybody, that uh, um, uh, eliminated any uh, ethnic mission is now ID card, because now everybody, like in the past we were, everybody had to be uh, asked to produce ID card, which is sometimes, you know, uh, at some point for me and other people like myself, was uh, considered a passport to death. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 the other policy of uh, uh, choice of uh, thinking big. Uh, I can only give an example. It's just mind of uh, an idea of uh, uh, um, changing my, our mindset. Mm -hmm. You see that the media uh, people are uh, always uh, journalists, Western, especially Western journalists, refer to Rwanda as a, a small country in uh, in East Central Africa, or just a tiny little country, which are really debasing. But remember, once uh, His Excellency the President said, we, we, are, we may be a small country, but we are not small-minded people. We encourage us to think big. Imagine, uh, uh, that's I give like just one, uh, one, it's just one, one joke, but in, to, to illustrate how our mindset has changed now. I remember in one interview, uh, asking President of the at the time, uh, because Rwanda didn't have a television, then they, say, they asked him, you know, they asked him, yeah, Mr. President, why doesn't Rwanda have a television? And you know, he said, in here, Rwanda, ah, Turaba Chene, can have go to Chene, we can go to Chene, Mizikia, Michael Jackson. So he said, uh, uh, why poor? Uh, we can't have a television to play uh, Michael songs, Jackson's song. songs. Yes. But then, uh, you see now, Rwanda can even have a satellite, f uh, sat uh, have a launch a satellite, you now we use the robots, we have like this, uh, 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 drones to, to, to deliver blood in the remote areas. So we think that something, we can think like other people think. We can't be prisoner of our small mindedness that, that we inherited from the past. So that's why really Rwanda has been able to make a tremendous progress compared to the countries in, in the area and even in the whole Africa. Not because we are rich with resources, but because we have a mindset of thinking big. That's all I can say. Mindset of thinking big, mindset of staying together, mindset of you know um, uh, being accountable. Do you think our yeah. leaders are accountable? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I even wanted to talk about uh, uh, being accountable. I think I, I can talk about uh, like someone who grew up in different regimes and uh, slightly under Kayiwanda, but then have Jarimana, which I know very well. There was no accountability. Uh, everybody, someone was, everybody was above, some people were above the law. It's like any uh, animal farm, you know, Jojo were, Jojo were an, book, animal farm. Where you say all animals are equal, but there are those who are more equal than the others. So, but now, we had a system of check and balances. I can uh, refer to the uh, Honorable Francesca and, and everybody who follows the, the, what's going on in the parliament with the, this public accounts committee. 
with the Senator Juvenile Musi, where he, head of our, uh, uh, government enterprises, head of our, any, any organization, is brought to account for how they manage the public uh, uh, resources. And then if somebody in Rwanda uh, makes a mistake, whether a minister or anyone, uh, my friend, that person is gone because he failed to fulfill is a pledge to uh, to uh, accomplish uh, his goal or his, uh, his mandate. So that's kind of accountability that we need to protect the, the resources, meager resources we have, and also if we want everybody to be equal in, in, in before the courts and before the, before, uh, the law. Ja, let me ask you, you know our, our, our fundamental principles as stated in the Constitution, but particularly this principle number six, constant quest for solutions through dialogue and consensus. Uh, you've lived in Rwanda, you've lived in other places, uh, especially even in uh, the UK where you are. Do you think consensus and dialogue is the best way to go? Uh, of course, with the, uh, there are people who, I was really, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was reading a, um, an article, somebody, a friend of mine who saw this article uh, published in a newspaper in Australia. Uh, it was written by a, a, an English professor, an academic, who said that that's a Gwandan model uh, can't be exported uh, or can't be taken and copied elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, because they said that, because we, our, our model, our model is dictated by our history, our culture, and so on. But then uh, I think it's, a, it's a, a rebuttal that came from Rwanda from a colleague, uh, Gerard Banda, who said, sorry, Professor, our, can, our model is not for export. It's for us. So what we, we achieved is, is uh, tailored to the needs of our population. So in terms of what we're doing and where we're going, that's what that's solely that uh, based on our homegrown solutions, which respond to the needs to for the economic well-being and development of our, our people. Okay, uh, you had his views. Uh, it's it's 26 years later. Uh, we of course we go. We cannot forget where we've come from, but we still need to base on our, on our future projections as a country the development to where we come from, to 26 years later, haven't we matured enough to start looking at other ideologies, political ideologies, um, and, and, and other ideas that can actually push us to, to being the Rwanda that we want? Do we have to stick to the 26 years ago that we experienced this, so we cannot change this and that? Sorry? Can you What repeat? I'm saying? Yes. Uh, don't you think we're mature enough as a nation uh -huh. to move away from some of the ideology, political ideologies that we've had and held on to for the last 26 years? Well, thank you. Mm. We are mature, but we are not yet mature enough. Uh, we have moved 26 years, but we still see some uh, elements that pull us back. For example, uh, we have matured, but we are not yet as developed as we want. The fundamental economic, the economic uh, transformation we want, we haven't achieved. We still lack uh, infrastructure. Of course, we have gone somehow far uh, in uh, having some infrastructure. For example, electricity. At least we know uh, a big part of Rwanda is electrified, but still we want all of Rwanda to be electrified. We, we need roads. We have, we, we have roads, but we don't have tarmac roads everywhere in Rwanda. So we have matured. It's like a baby eh, delivered today. He, he grows up or she up to 12 years. You say she's a teenager. But you want that uh, person to go to 18, to 21, to uh, an adult, to even an old man. Yeah. So we still have a long way to go. Uh, even those countries that developed before us, those that have in infrastructure, still need more infrastructure. They even want to go to to the moon, 
to yeah. find other um, planets. planets. Yeah. So for us, we still have a lot of things to cover. And if I go back to the fundamental, I talked about the unit and reconciliation. We still have people who, have, who don't believe we are one. We still have people who want to take us back. Genocide Exactly. Who hold ideology of genocide, ethnicity, who are still in the bush, who want to take us back, who don't want to be with us because they want to see themselves as the ethnic group. And they want to see us that. So we still have that long way to go. We want every Rwandan to think like us, to know that we are one, to know that if we are to develop, if we are to achieve anything, we must be together. Uh, even those who don't want to, 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 to be with us today, we believe in the future they will be with us. And if they don't come, but their children will come. The future is for the youth. It's not for us only today. Yeah. We have the youth, and if that youth think like us, the old ones will go with their old ideas. Yes. Uh, I, I've talked of the economic transformation. I've talked of the, uh, um, the ideology, the genocide ideological ideas that people still hold. Yeah. Um, so we haven't grown enough. We still want to grow. Of Don't you think there is some things that need to change? 26 years later, it's not a short time. <laughs> well, um, Yes, of course, there are some things that need to change, uh, but there are some fundamentals that need to remain, uh, like the issues uh, of unity and reconciliation. I think that's a, a of don't course, touch. We need to be that's a don't yeah. touch because if you take away unity and reconciliation, then we are back into we are back into killing each other. We are back into havoc and genocide again, and we don't want to go back into that. So we must uphold that principle of unity and reconciliation. But then issues of governance. I think the issues of governance, uh, according to the Constitution, we agree on political pluralism. So I think we need to uh, improve more on that and uh, so that people could feel free to join political parties and could feel proud of their political parties, even if they are not in the ruling party. And then people in other political parties uh, could also have a chance to uh, do economic activities or have uh, uh, jobs and uh, because when you go to the rural areas, I mean, what I'm saying, I uh, say it with proof that we went to one district in the northern province and uh, we had a training there and people told us that, you know what, that there's only one political party here, it's Arakef. And there's only one church here, Catholic church. So one church, one, one party. party. Other parties, they're not allowed. <laughs> so basically, there are people, not, it's just one hour's drive from here. Yeah. People used to have that mentality. You know, so we've gone even here in the south where we, we booked it, paid our conference hall, and people said, No, you cannot have your meeting from here. Until so then, this uh, is a hotel, that yes, is denying you, you we, get your paid up it. everything. We need, to, yes, so and this how is how do we move from that? How so, we, exactly, that's because, what I'm trying to say. This to, kind of yeah. uh, mentality has to change. People have to know that all political parties in Rwanda will all have equal rights and equal opportunities. That if, even if you are in the ruling party and you are part of the governance, you should recognize other parties and don't look at them as enemies. And there are some people up to now who still think that we are uh, from the forest, that some of them still confuse us with uh, armed groups like FDLR and others. And uh, I mean, it is strange. I mean, we're 26 years later, we have grown up, I mean, but people they are still stuck in the kind of pre genocide ideology of one party state. They don't see that we are no longer one party state, that we, need, we are pro democracy here. Yeah. Whose so, fault is it? Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, that this is issues of, of governance, the they have to be, yeah. to be uh, improved. If I may interrupt, mm. yeah. uh, I think the fault is for the predecessors of the uh, politics before. People are scared of the multipartism because they saw what happened here because of the multipartism. And it is not their fault. It is the fault of, the, of you people to show that what you are intending to do is unity, is to work together, is development. So they, know, they don't understand that today hmm, we want to work together. 
But if we make them understand as politicians, we visit them, we tell them these people are together, we normally go together to the field. So it is, you think it's the fault, it's, of it's, the, of it's the, the responsibility parties, of the opposition parties of the parties to make themselves. their presence felt. Exactly, that's I don't it. think so. I yeah. think it's the issues of the local ad, uh, governance, yeah. the, the local administrators, some of them are still thick in their minds. They don't see that, uh, really, that we as a country, we have moved on, we have evolved. We have 11 political parties in Rwanda, and they all have equal chances and equal opportunities. And people, the villagers, or the people, the citizens, they have a right to join any party. So without being asked, because sometimes they are asked, why did you choose to join that party? Mm. Uh, will you be safe? Or if you are in that party, if you need, uh, like if they go, they need a cow, they say, go to your party to give you the cow. But you know, people still, may, the may local ask, still have a ask you, you Frank, mm. we see parties like, PSD and PL. Exactly. Uh, do you think they're being considered the way Green Party or... No, they're not considered the why? same way why because you, they have been part of the ruling coalition yes. just immediately since after the genocide. Exactly. So because the PSD and PL with other coalition partners, yes. they've been in the government from that time. So when PSD goes, I don't think they are treated the same way we are being treated. Like if you pe people from PSM Barakuri and the Green Party, when we go to the ground, we are treated differently. But those ones, they are not the, But I think it's... I it's I know, I've, had you stories, I've had the... stories that even during the campaigns, that when it's time for elections, mm. sometimes it's not also so easy for PSD and PL. I hear, but I don't have proof for that. I don't have proof for mine. But I had stories that uh, sometimes when it's time for campaigns, things are quite difficult for all of us. So how do we make sure? I, I, yes, uh, I don't think that's true mm. because the local government, he mentioned that the, the fault of the local government, those are the very people who prepare the ground for, the, uh, for their campaigns. They are the ones who, who allow them to, to, to go to carry out the campaigns. Yes. So when you want to do the campaign, you write to them. But if you want to go seriously, Without mentioning your presence, without telling them that you'll be present, definitely you meet resistance. Well, but you know, the government, not, 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 not even in the private remember. sector, yeah. because he's talking about uh, even a, a the hotel that denied them a room to hold a conference. But if but, you go yeah. back to the local government, yes. we have specific examples, like when we went to Nyagatari district, where the local administration took us to a cemetery to campaign from there. We also have a specific case in Chehe district when a local administration took us deep into the forest and they made children beat us, throw us stones at us. So these are specific examples and they are not sequestered, they have been even out in the media. So the problem is still there with local administration. That's what we are saying. That, that's what I'm trying to, I'm, what I'm, I'm saying that this needs to change because you ask us a question, do we want, do we have something to change? Yes, I'm saying this has to change. This mentality from local leaders mm -hmm. has to change. They need to know that we are all human beings. We are all Rwandans. We all love our country. We all have the same objectives of unifying this country, but we have different ideas and we have different political ideologies mm -hmm. and we are also registered. So we all should be given equal opportunities, equal chances. If the winner wins, that's okay. But this when you have been given an equal opportunity. That's what I'm trying to say. You've been in the, in the system, of course, in the, in the legislation for some time now. Um, what is your understanding of, of the politics now? And uh, uh, do you think we are a step further uh, from, where, from campaign, presidential campaigns mm. where you, uh, you campaigned from the, the forests? Well, probably people thought it's a green party. You need to go <laughs> to a green zone. Um, where, how far have we gone? No, from that no. Particular Not being green party meant that you should go to the forest. That's what, if that was the case, then yes. that was a very, very wrong mentality. Yeah. But uh, I would say that uh, I think uh, this parliament uh, is a different parliament, and uh, maybe it's a, so a different timing. That uh, at least all uh, political parties registered in Rwanda they are represented in parliament. This is the first time that this is happening. And it's also the first time that opposition parties are also part of the parliament. I mean, those parties which were not, have not been part of the ruling coalition. Yeah. So, um, so I would say that there is, uh, it's been not easy in the beginning. We've been learning this and that and some crashes here and there, but I think we are getting to uh, understand each other. And um, I would say that now, uh, now that, if we bring our different ideas, the people
people do appreciate they don't uh, fight how us. do they uh, uh, how do they perceive you in parliament in relation to the the perception that we've had Perhaps yeah, you should ask my colleague how about. they perceive us. She can tell you how they perceive uh, us. She might say they perceive you very well. <laughs> exactly. Different from, That's it. Uh, 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 how do you perceive them? <laughs> they are, uh, we, they are t we are together. They are, they are not like the way they are being perceived in, uh, in the towns that you mentioned. Where they were no way, no way. We are, we, how are you being perceived? Well, I would say that uh, as this is, we are approaching two years. Yeah. As I said, the first year was quite difficult. Uh, we were new. And I think even other MPs were new also in the parliament. Almost half of the parliament were, were all new. More than half. More than half. So I think there was, most of them had the same perception as the local leaders. So there was that kind of crashing here and there. And, uh, but now I think after doing the second year, I think people have understood that, yes, we are different, but we are not against each other. I think that's what I would say. That. Mm. They know that we are not against the country. We may be against a certain idea or a certain ideology, but not against the republic. We are not against the republic of Rwanda. We are for the republic. We are for the unit of Rwandans. We are for the development of Rwanda. But we may not agree with this idea or that idea or that policy or that policy, but that not, does not mean that we are not agreeing with the country. We op oppose her party, but we are not opposing Rwanda. Do you get my point I here? We are not opposing the republic. We may oppose the government. We oppose the government, but not the republic. These are two different things here. Yeah. So some people think that, oh, because you're opposition, you're against the country. No, we are not against the country. Yeah. And being in opposition, even RPF has been in opposition. Yeah. And it's now in the government. And tomorrow, if we win the elections, there will be an opposition. And we still work together. And we've been together. So all we can be, even the law of Rwanda, the constitution of Rwanda, allows all the parties in parliament to be in the government. So we can still even be in government together, even when we have different ideas. So it's all allowed here. Yeah. So I think that uh, in parliament, the perception has evolved here. Yeah. And I wish that even people in the local administration, their perception should evolve and take us all as Rwandans with equal chance and equal opportunities. Not just in ideas, but also in people having access to jobs, to markets, to what. So, because it affects everything there. Mm. Yeah. If I may One, talk please. about what he's saying, uh, he says even in the RPF, RPF once was in opposition, today yeah. it's a ruling party. Mm. Uh, if you may understand the, the word front, front means accommodative. Yeah. Yes. It means we are in RPF, we believe having different ideas is healthy. Mm. It helps people to develop. Even in the RPF itself, don't think they have one idea. They bring ideas, different ideas together until they get one that can move forward the country. Now that we are in the, we are the ruling party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So having different ideas is healthy with RPF. Mm -hmm. Having different ideas, it's fantastic in parliament. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a problem at all mm -hmm. having an opposition sitting beside me having different ideas on a, a certain law that has come in, having a different idea on uh, different forums that we have, it's okay. Once it, uh, it, it's uh, very good for us, it's good for the, uh, uh, to move forward the, 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 the country, the we accept it. Mm. it. It's really healthy to have an opposition. So we don't, we, we don't see him as an enemy. Yeah. But if I can go back to what he said mm -hmm. about the people, uh, the perception, the the perception of the people, yeah. I mentioned that before. I said people have a very wrong, a, a very sc scary remembrance yeah. of the multipartism. Mm -hmm. The parties are the, are the ones that drove this country to the stage of genocide. Yeah. Even you know some parties that were... But at some point we had one party. Abiyarimana's. Exactly. Yeah. And one party wasn't here mm. It's It's, it's the, 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 the one that uh, prepared genocide and implemented it. Yeah. So multipartism is okay. We have so many parties in Rwanda. Probably m many more would develop. Uh, uh, but uh, if people uh, in the fields if the people in the local government, if individuals look at you differently, don't think it's the policy. It's really but, but totally different. Do you think we need to change that, you know, the perception? The, the yes, we have to. At, uh, Frank Abineza or Philippe Maima. It's now, his or, responsibility. Nobody else's responsibility. It's his responsibility think, to show how, uh, uh, what he wants from the people, what he wants from the opposition. So when you go to the people and you tell them something different that is not uh, constructive, 
people who know what's happened here, they will definitely avoid you. They will definitely try to get rid of you. Yeah. But if you show yourself as someone together with other parties, that's why P PL, and that's PSD. why PSD, they are not harassed. So, so without, it's up to you. So without joining the coalition, that means there is a problem. Or the way you pass, the way you present yourself on the first yes. on the onset becomes mm -hmm. the issue of the general understanding. Well, I would say that uh, uh, it's the problem is I think it's a, uh, it's, this is let's call it a collective responsibility. Uh, but the government has a bigger responsibility to play. And I will give a specific example. When we were harassed in Nyagatare during the presidential elections and in Chirehe, and uh, we reached a moment whereby uh, my campaign team was going to suspend the campaigns because we said we had seen was before in Changu, we had been in the Nyamasheche, we had been in the Usizi, we had seen problems, we had tolerated them. But when it reached there, uh, the, we, when we were suspending the campaign, uh, then the Minister of Local Government, uh, Francis Kaboneka, mm. made, a, I think, a video conference with all the mayors uh, in the country. And they warned them and told them that, you know what, all the political parties, all the candidates have chances to campaign. Stop that misbehavior you are doing. And uh, the, the government took even a stand of arresting one mayor, I think, in, in Rubavu, who was doing something. And even I know that those mayors who had done something bad to us in Yakatara and in Chilehe, they were also disciplined one way or another, or questioned or whatever. So then that atmosphere reduced. And then we were able to do a proper campaign. And I give you a good example. When we went to Nyamagabe, we had about 60,000 people coming to our campaign. So there was a big difference. People were blocking people to come. They stopped blocking them, and people were able to come. So I would say that that's why the government has a role to play. So you can't take the government away from there. Because if something happens, the government has a responsibility to, to cater for Because the, the Rwandans say that the government is a mother for all Rwandans. It's our mother. So it has to take care of these children here. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, we have a responsibility, yeah. as she said, that we should have good politics. That's when I agree. Yeah. We should not have bad politics of divisions and, and mm -hmm. so on. But if we're having good politics and people are mistreating us and uh, Torturing us, and torturing us and also arresting us or doing something bad, then the government has a role to play. Mm. And they include, when I say government, it includes the police and uh, all the organs of the government here. Jacques Ayagamba, you've heard what is transpiring in the studio here. Uh, what is your understanding of multi-party system and what we're talking about here? How do we make sure that um, dialogue and consensus takes root in our politics? Jacques Gamba, you there? It's by uh, Honorable Frank. Yes. I think he, I can only uh, sympathize with him, but uh, he, he should also appreciate that uh, Rwanda came a long way. I remember way back in 1991 when uh, multipartism was uh, accepted in Rwanda uh, by the then MRND, uh, single ruling power party. I remember people uh, traveling to areas like Ruhenje used to be uh, for campaigning, like a position of parties like PA or M MDA. They used to be parted with the stones. I don't think such things happen as, um, today. But his uh, 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 few cases he mentioned about uh, being uh, not accommodated by local authorities. Uh, these are a few, a, a few bad apples, but we can't overgeneralize that the situation is really bad because the, 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 the politics of um, uh, consensual democracy where every political party is accommodated, that's why it's got a seat in the parliament today. But I should appreciate that uh, even in mature democracies, there are political parties who are like heavyweights. Here in the UK, we've got like a small parties like a Green Party or the Liberal Democratic Party who have one MP or five MPs. Definitely, their voices will ne not pass through, like the uh, Conservative or the Labour Party, which has a, a big agenda, which offers uh, different programs that are attract people. Though the politics of uh, like the Green Party uh, or Liberal Democrats are attractive, but you need the political crowd, financial crowd. If your Green Party goes on the field with the RPF, which has been on the ground, also which uh, massive uh, uh, infrastructure in terms of um, 
our logistics. And also, in terms of our, our governing agenda, what is offered to people. So it depends on what really uh, Frank and his party offers to the people so that people can make a choice. Uh, but otherwise, uh, for me, it's really uh, things are moving in the right direction, mm -hmm. though there are always things to improve. How do we That's improve those? How do we improve those? How do we improve? How do we make sure that that perception of seeing Green Party or any other political party as as a, a, a terrorist uh, element, for instance, like you mentioned, or something that is not that doesn't have the the will, the good will of the people? How do we change that? I think it's a matter of educating the people, especially those uh, the at the the, rock, the grassroots uh, the local authorities, yeah, mm -hmm. to be uh, minded that. To accommodate everyone as long as they are building, not destroying. Because you have to note also that uh, there are other other people, not Frank, but other uh, elements that call themselves opposition parties who are in, hell bent on bringing back the genocide ideology or who are not working for the interests of the country. Uh, those who, who are, uh, we mentioned, uh, uh, they are mentioned like those of P5. So maybe they confuse him with other political parties like uh, others that we know that uh, so division is of uh, consolidating a national unity. But otherwise, sustaining the population, also but, uh, but also taking to the leaders to understand their responsibility to accommodate every, every, every political party that comes to, to, to towards them. He talked about um, the incident that happened and how the, the former minister of local governments took part to make sure that the local leaders uh, understand the role of, of political uh, parties. Do you think there is a role the government can play in making sure that the other opposition parties are perceived in the right way, but also seen as the contributors of Rwanda's development? Of course, of course. Because the, the government, as he said, uh, he looks for the interest of all, caters for the interest of all Rwandans. Mm -hmm. I think the, 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 the problem, I think, uh, if I can guess it right, is some overzealous local leaders who think that, yeah, if I prevent uh, the Green Party from campaigning or having a conference, I'm doing good to the ruling party or to, to the RPA for other, other interests. No. Let them compete on the ground. They'll be competing on ideas and what they can offer. So let's give equal, everybody equal chance to campaign, uh, and then that will pass by allowing them to hold meetings, to campaign when the elections, and that's why we can have a fair and equal opportunity to, to governance. Mm -hmm. But I think the government, uh, whether the Minister of Interior or security organs have a mandate and a duty to or remedy or to, to Data anybody mm. who try to thwart uh, 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 honorable Frank uh, people to 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 do go about their political business. Mm. Let, let me engage you on the question that I, I asked the panel here earlier. Uh, do you think, uh, 26 years later, do you think some things need to change in Rwanda? The way we're seeing things. Of course, I'm not talking about unity. We need unity. Every the world needs unity and. But do you think some political ideologies need to change, uh, thinking with, owing to the fact that we've matured 26 years later as a nation? I think what would change, must change, really, it's a, um, a belief that uh, we have achieved a lot. You look at the, I saw the, the, the transformation of, uh, uh, of our country, especially in the capital, which was a uh, a rubble after 1994. Mm -hmm. And when, okay, I'm, I'm in the diaspora, but every time when I come to one day after a couple of years, I could see that this will kill every development steps we have taken. But that one, we have uh, to upkeep the, the, this, uh, the framework we set up for our accountability, uh, also uh, respecting the, the uh, idea of national unity and reconciliation. Because definitely, if some remnants, you could see that there are some remnants of uh, uh, genocide or ideology that is still prevent some sectors and some sections of, uh, of the population, especially with, I uh, uh, was mentioning this story uh, I had recently of uh, a mass grave uh, uh, at Gitwe University Hospital, 
where people had living in, uh, that living in the area never mentioned that there was a mass grave, which means that the people are not really They're ready not opening up. to yeah. cut, yeah, yeah, to mm. give up with the, 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 the past that took us to genocide. Mm. So we need to get together to understand that we, we're working for unity and not to really uh, make, not make sure that we never uh, go back to what Rwanda was in the past. Mm. Well, with this division, this uh, genocide, the hatred and so on, we should make sure that we consolidate our gains by educating everybody, especially, uh, I'm talking here about uh, some section of the youth, especially in the diaspora, which is still have genocide or ideology. And you see from their genocidal fathers who are uh, fugitive or, or roaming the world. But uh, in Rwanda, we have to educate them to understand where we came from and where we, we go once we cut off our ties with the past. Interesting insights over there. Uh, we are entering the second part of uh, our discussion this evening. And I want us to talk about sustaining gains that we've made as, as a nation. Uh, but also considering that you know we have a few uh, uh, issues to address, like he was mentioning, how do we address, sustain the gains, uh, the, our political gains, our political choices, uh, the gains of our political choices? How do we sustain that moving forward? Thank you. Moving forward is very important. We should not go back to where we were. As he has, Kaigam has just mentioned that we should know where we came from and we avoid to go back. But sustainability is very important. We have, uh, the government has put in place uh, programs, uh, has put in place uh, uh, actions to, to be carried forward so that we, we don't go back. First of all, sustaining the unity we have. We are educating the youth. We have a torero, if I mention that, that torero te uh, teaches the youth, the young ones, even some old ones, uh, not to go back to the genocide, genocidal ideologies, to show them what happened. They show them the uh, action plans, the programs that Rwanda has, and they request the youth their participation. So that's one... Uh, thing of sustaining what we have achieved. And then uh, uh, the, 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 the programs we have, the national strategy for transformation talked of, the economic transformation. I won't go uh, deep into the economic transformation. It has so many keys and uh, objectives. Uh, if you may talk of the private sector, for example, if we are to sustain what we have achieved economically, the private sector has to be supported, has to move forward, has to work very hard so that we don't go back uh, to poverty. At least Rwanda has achieved some level of... Um, we have... Uh, uh, I may not use the word eradication, but at least we have reduced some level of poverty. We, we have, we, we want to, uh, we, you know how much we wanted to achieve in 2020, though we haven't achieved that in terms of finance, but we have moved towards it. Uh, that is one of the uh, ideas, and that's how we can sustain what we have. And then, um, if we, uh, I may talk of the, transformational governance. I, 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 I skip the social transformation. But if, even if I don't skip the social transformation, when you talk of the to social transformation, it is one of the pillars that will help us to sustain what we have achieved. It includes the uh, improving education, it improves the, uh, live, uh, the, the um, people living uh, um, heresy, uh, uh, the people getting accommodated moved from the, the housing, thank you, from the high-risk zones to, 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 to apartments that yes. are built by the government. Uh, for those who are not capable of getting their own housing, uh, we have uh, the, the transformation of governance. We have the leadership. Uh, how do we move on? Uh, despite the challenges that you mentioned, mm. how do we move on? How do we uh, 
uh, progress? How do we move as a country to make sure that we sustain what we've achieved, but so making amends where we've not done well as a nation? Yeah, well, uh, I think, um, first of all, we need to stick uh, with the spirit of the Constitution. Yes. Especially those fundamental principles in Article 10. They are quite, they are six, they are not so they're many. They are six, yes. Yeah, so there's that one fighting against the genocide and there is uh, empowering women, making sure that women are part of the structures, mm -hmm. even the 30 percent. And um, now we have even a, a new scourge of uh, defilement, rape. And um, then we go to uh, other parts, uh, maybe I would dwell on this part, uh, I think so, at part four which talks about uh, um, uh, building a state governed by the rule of law. The rule of law. Yeah. So there, uh, when this, the country ha has to make sure that uh, we have all this, yes, we have some institutions in place, we have the investigation bureau, we have the Rwanda police, we have, uh, but the issues of rule of law have to be enforced because when there is no rule of law, people will lose trust in the government. Uh, when there is no rule of law, even investors who lose trust say, so if I go to invest my money there, maybe something will change and will take my businesses and so on, or, you know? Institutions. And these issues of accountability, they also come into the rule of law. To uh, embezzle government funds, they know that the law will catch up with them. And so that if that is put into practice, to have one word called the big fish and the small fish. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if we, all the fishes, whether big or small, yes. they are all held accountable in equal terms. You know, It gives a good signal that uh, even other types of uh, well, fish. the other fishes, or not, yeah. not even other animals who are not yeah. fish, they will know that ah, if a big fish was arrested, if I try also be, at least I would be punished. Yeah. If someone's property has been auctioned, because we need to move on. If people embezzle government funds, they need, we, we arrest them, but what's next? They should auction that, those properties. And then they will know that ah, if you construct a house after stealing government money, your house, your property will be auctioned. Then it will discourage someone else to do the same. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so that's the rule of law. And um, then we go to another principle, could be number five, I think, which mm -hmm. is about power sharing. Yes. That's power sharing? No, uh, building a state committed to promoting social welfare and establishing uh, uh, appropriate mechanisms for equal opportunity to social justice. Yes, that, I think that one is more said there. But let me talk about the power sharing. Power sharing, uh, which uh, is number three. Number three, yes, yes. yeah. So this is very important uh, because uh, this principle was put there for a purpose that previous, the previous government or previous governments this, because it was not just one government. Yeah. And they used to have something called a kazoo or whatever, like a small creek. Uh, so, uh, and that made other Rwandans in other parts of the country feel left out from these governments. And these things created discontent and uh, later helped in causing, bringing some of the troubles that we have here. So I, I would say that uh, the new government when it took over, it adopted the principle of power sharing, saying that now, we should not do the same mistakes like as our predecessors has did. We should make sure that uh, if we have power, uh, state, authority, state power should be shared between all political actors, and including civil society and others here. So, um, so I would say that uh, um, the government, the, the current government, which has the mandate uh, to govern Rwanda, should remember that principle which is in the constitution, that yeah. all political actors, they need to be involved I'm saying this because some political actors, including ourselves, we are not yet involved in the governing of the country. Yet the constitution allows that. But you are you in the legislation. Which we is got elected the into the parliament. Yeah. But the, the law says that Article 62 of the constitution, that once a party is in parliament, it, it has a chance to get into state structures. That including ministers and other structures. So we're still waiting for that. I think we're not going to debate that. We had a big debate here with the former Minister of Constitutional Affairs. Yeah. So I think I made all my points very clear. So I'm saying that we haven't seen that yet in this, the Constitution. It's not only us, even the other parties. So we said that this is one of the fundamental principles of the Constitution. These things, if they're not respected when they're under the Constitution, it creates discontent, it creates problems, then it kills the sustainability. You cannot sustain your gains when you have 
grumbling, discontent, and what, and those things when they grow over on, grow on over with time, they create bigger problems. As you know, political parties, uh, their, their mandate is to rule. I mean, the, the all political parties uh, being established is to achieve. Uh, it is one of our colleagues who says, not to go to dig or whatever, yeah. <laughs> politics or whatever, but it's to have political power. So basically, this is one of the reasons we were, we were established as political parties. So do you so, think... Wait a moment. Yes. So if we cannot sustain this, or we cannot respect our own constitution or all the articles in the constitution, then we give room to uh, problems or to enemies and then maybe another point I'll talk about, uh, since I've mentioned about enemies, mm -hmm. that uh, um, we should also have a, a, a mechanism of, like we have a, the Article 6 of the Constitution talks about, I mean, Article 6 of the fundamental, yeah. so I, I want six, to actually bring in sorry, uh, Part 6 of the fundamental first, principles, yes. which talks about uh, consensus and dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. Consensus and dialogue. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, six. Uh, number six number of the six fundamental six. principles, yes. yeah. So uh, this thing is important that we should be able to dialogue with people we perceive as our enemies, enemies of the state, and people we perceive as uh, we don't agree with, uh, whether inside the country or outside the country, there's that provision of dialogue. I don't know how the government can do it, but the government has, let's say, the, 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 they have the, the minds, they have the wisdom, yes. so that we should, because if we are able to do that, we will save the country from another list of people who can destabilize. Because you have seen people throwing grenades around here. Yeah. Uh, you have seen people trying to attack us in Ruhengeri last year, in, yeah. uh, in Musanze. In Musanze. Have some, I mean, there are problems here and there. So I think uh, the government, through its Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, can find means of how it can use this article, this uh, principle of dialogue. dialogue to make sure that we can dialogue with people we don't agree with. Because, of course, you don't dialogue with people you agree with. People you agree with, you discuss with them, you yeah. have a conversation. And then those you don't agree with, then you have the, that dialogue. So that uh, at the end, we can have a sustainable Rwanda whereby you know that your children will not see. I've had a chance to live in Sweden. And people in Sweden, they said, I've not seen war for 200 years. And the, Imagine 200 years they have not seen war. Even the First World War and Second World War, they passed. They never, had, they never took part of that. So basically, people, they, when they, they, don't, they don't know what war is. I want to have a Rwanda whereby my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, they will say that we had a war in 1990, and that will be like 200 years yes. later. And people have done they say, this is a peaceful country. We are able to solve our problems through consensus, through dialogue, and we can... Move on forward. So, but this the is, approach that this is my the, 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 the way of sustaining our you mentioned, they are not using the, the dialogue approach. And so I will get back they to do. That. Actually, in Sweden, uh, some of no, the things we are talking about the enemies, the, of the enemies of, of, of the country. country. Yeah. I, I don't think that's. Of course, those who want to fight, you fight with them. No. I mean, that's the Minister of Defense has that mandate. Yes. Yeah. Those who want to fight, they, you fight with them. Mm. I am also master in war. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know that. Yeah, that is there. There you can do that. Mm -hmm. But there are those who want to talk, you talk with them. But even those who want to fight, they fight and they need time to talk. They don't fight forever. They fight and they get tired of fighting and you can talk to them. Yeah. So still there's a chance. They, I mean, you, there's always a chance of talking because you don't win by fighting. No, because okay, no one will win by fighting. Let me, let, let, okay, I will okay, get okay, back okay. to you. Please yeah, hold okay, your point. Okay, okay. Please hold your point, mm -hmm. and I will get back to you. Yeah. Jack Gamba, you've heard that. And uh, how do we yeah. sustain the gains of, uh, of, uh, of um, political choices? Uh, no. uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got, uh, I got the point. But uh, uh, I was listening uh, uh, quietly to Honorable Frank Camino's calling for dialogue. Mm. I can uh, let me ask him, him, how do you have a dialogue with the? Uh, an entity like FDRAN are not uh, have a platform of uh, destroying what you have achieved. Do they even have want any, dialogue? Uh, a national unity and reconciliation. Also, if these parties still they are uh, uh, they are uh, 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 harboring genocide, uh, denial, and revisionism, mm -hmm. I don't see any chance for the Rwanda government going to look for the, first of all these entities call, calling themselves political parties from abroad. They are not political parties as such. Because they are not registered in the country, they can pretend to be political parties, but they are not. And maybe it's, a, it's just a scheme of um, living abroad and trying to uh, attract uh, funding from their members. Mm -hmm. But as long as 
They are not in Rwanda, they are not offering a political platform that is going forward with the, uh, the choices we made. I don't see how we can accept those parties that were initially uh, were built on uh, the same side or agenda or ethnic divisions of the past. So that's a problem. But otherwise, There's nobody who's been denied to come and build the country. We have this uh, program, I think, in the, in the country, uh, come and see. People have who had a uh, hostile attitude towards the government come to Rwanda and they saw by themselves, by their own eyes, what's happening in the country in terms of reconciliation and uh, national unity. They, 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 they decided to stay and come back. So, Jean, uh, what you're but, saying is that uh, these, uh, you know, elements that are uh, you know, actually they are part of the destabilizing the country. Those you mentioned, the LD, Runan, and, and, and the like. When it's this part, uh, the, the, the fundamental principle number six of constant quest for solution through dialogue and consensus, they should be the ones to take a step and end whatever they are doing that is not against actually seeking uh, consensus and dialogue. No, first of all, I, I've seen it anywhere where the, uh, any government uh, in the world uh, would uh, uh, negotiate with uh, uh, an entity that is uh, uh, very bent on destroying uh, what that government achieves. I think uh, uh, if you, the, those entities or parties want, whatever so-called parties want to, to have a, a dialogue, they should renounce uh, any forms of genocide denial or any uh, peddling of double genocide ideology, also accept that Rwanda is changed and changes for good, so that they embrace the policies you have of uh, consensus in Rwanda, uh, where they accommodated small and big parties, like uh, Frank Avenue's Green Party, which was recently accepted the parliament through uh, legal means, through peaceful means. But uh, embracing those uh, uh, parties, because they have been a threat since... Uh, I don't see cases of people who returned to Rwanda uh, from uh, the who said, uh, "Wow!" Uh, uh, after many years uh, in those uh, organizations, saying that uh, I realized I was mistaken. Now I'm coming back to build the country with the other people inside the country. Mm. I think it's 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 not a coincidence that uh, the first fundamental principle of our constitution is prevention and punishment of crimes of genocide, fighting uh, against denial and revisionism of genocide, as well as eradication of genocide ideology and its all manifestations. I think if you cannot move from this first fundamental principle, then the rest is very hard to be achieved. Sure, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, before we went to Kai Gamba, you had, uh, you know, yes. I had some... I had some points to, to talk about. How can you dialogue? How can you talk? How can you sit on a table, debate with someone who says that you will come to this country when there is no longer any Tutsi living? Exactly. That's not possible. Mm. And those are the people who want the dialogue. How can you t have a dialogue with someone like Twajira Mungo? I'm sorry to mention the yes. name, but he said it, that his problem is, is not to take over the country because he's confident he will take it over, but his major problem is how he will destroy the buildings that have been put up. How can you have a dialogue with someone who is destructive like him? How can you have a dialogue with someone who ran away from accountability? Someone who embezzled government money, he ran away, he, uh, and when he reached outside, when he has got uh, accommodation, then he turns his sins into a political party. He wants to have dialogue. Let him first serve the sentence. Let him first be punished. Let him first be accountable. Then, if he wants to start a party, he can have a party like yours, a peaceful one. You have a dialogue. And again, if I may conclude this, we have a forum for dialogue. We have every December, we have the national dialogue and everyone who has something to build this country and everyone who wants to talk, it's a forum international one. Everyone everywhere in the world yeah, brings in his yes. thoughts. Over the world, always hold. So that principle is not over 
uh, stepped, yeah. that principle is always carried out. We, every December, we have the dialogue. And if we have se several forums that we can have the dialogue. Even the government retreat, it's always open. You can uh, tweet, you can give your thoughts before. We always come here to talk about the government retreat and we say what yeah. we want those people to discuss. So the dialogue is there. But we can't have a dialogue, I'm sorry to say, with the people who are destructive, with the people who run, run away from accountability. That's what I wanted to say. How do you move say. away from detractors? How do you move away from people who, are not, who don't want to see things the same way? He's, she's just mentioned about someone who, are, who wants to come and their first goal is to demolish all the buildings that have been <laughs> set up. Well, I was not aware of, I wasn't of, aware of that. I, just uh, had, I never had mm, him say uh, that. Yes. Uh, last time I had... Uh, well, but how do we move But what I would say is that... Uh, yes. um, uh, the, why this principle was put into the constitution is because it is something very important for, the, for this nation because of where we have come from and where we want to go. Definitely. Yeah. So it is something which has to be continuous, not to be done once a year, I mean the national yeah. but it has to be in our daily life and uh, I am not the one who, at certain times, who can, who, who knows that who, these are the country's enemies or these are country's friends. Mm -hmm. That's not my mandate. But I think there are institutions who know, who can, who have that mandate. Uh, one of them is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I think they are in charge of that, and there are others who can, who know that that these are country's friends and these are country's enemies. So my quest is that. Uh, we should be able to move to that hard level whereby we could be able to dialogue with our perceived enemies. And uh, because the friends, we'd always discuss with them. Yeah. So I also agree with Jean and uh, Honorable Tengler. Mm -hmm. uh, those ones, of course, that, that's against the constitution. That's one those ones that's uh, difficult to dialogue with them if their ideology is committing another genocide. But I know that there are so many political groups all over the world who do not yet have the same idea of committing the genocide. There are so many. Maybe uh, he has mentioned a few, but I think there are many, at least uh, I know of more than 100. Give an example. And I'm not here to give examples, but I know that there are more than 100 who, who wish to, to come back to Rwanda, but they have some issues here, they have some problems there, and even some of them have, actually have problems with people who are already living there. But they, they still think that it's the government, yet the people, they had a problem with the ideology. The so no, they may have government? some common issues, yeah. maybe with governance issues, some of them have governance issues. So I think that the, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and other institutions should take up steps to who never committed genocide, or who are not even in the terrorist groups or whatever, but they wish to come back to one, but they cannot come back because of some issues with the state. So I think that the state, the government, has a responsibility, and is mandated by the constitution, to dialogue with all those people, to make sure that, that they can safeguard us, problem? to safeguard exactly. us, yes, yeah, to safeguard us in future, of people who may have a small problem, which may become a bigger problem, and can take up arms to destabilize us. Do you think those uh, that you mentioned, if they came, there would be any problem? I don't know the small problems you mentioned. I uh, think that uh, the Rwanda we want, hmm. because we are now talking about liberation. The, the, Rwanda, we want. the, Rwanda, the Rwanda we want. For me, I want to, to, want to have a Rwanda a, whereby it's free from scare of war and conflict. So wherever you have grumbling people outside the country, you really cannot sleep properly. Because you know that those people, they have bad motives, bad plans, evil plans. Yeah. So if, you, if there's a chance, if they want to fight, fight with them. Yes, those who want to fight, we have institutions to talk. Let's talk to them. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. The, the armed struggle, but mm -hmm. we are moving in beyond that. How do we move together as a nation? So that's what you have achieved. Uh, the fundamentals remain national unity and reconciliation. Uh, but I come back to uh, 
No, Honorable Frank, I mean, it's when he says uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Ministry should make effort to locate those people. I'm not sure if he forgot the program the, the government has, or he still has, I think, for the come and see. What? That program, come and see. Come and see. It's a program. Come and see. Go and looking for people. Yeah. 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 From the diaspora, all those people to come visit Rwanda. They're coming from Zambia, from the, any location. They come and visit and see that. Uh, some, because some people are fed up with the uh, uh, falsehoods, with the uh, fake stories about the, that you've got to Rwanda, you've killed all your. case of Nuyahaga, uh, who was brought from Belgium, he's there, but. Uh, was welcomed by her sister, his sister in Rwanda. So uh, you have the case of uh, uh, of this uh, young man who was in uh, Umusichirano who said uh, uh, his father is a rebel commander, FTR commander. That uh, they called him to, to come, he, he didn't come. But the government is paying for his scholarship and also for his sisters who studying, was studying in China and another one studying in 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 Ghana. There is a willingness for the government to accommodate everybody, but not everyone who is involved in activities of, like uh, 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 the missions, or other people who have uh, who run away because of uh, the fraud with the law, or who embezzled the funds. There is a gentleman who, uh, in 1995, he, he was in a high position of, uh, uh, pop, pop, or what you have achieved in terms of unification and uh, reconciliation. Because the, 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 whether we want it or not, Genocide ideology, uh, genocide denial and revisionism is very prevalent from outside, from those in those milieu mm -hmm. that Frank Avina is talking about. John, I want to believe those are your last thoughts because we are coming to the end, and I want to appreciate you for uh, joining us all the way from uh, the UK. Uh, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I will take your last thoughts uh, moving forward as a nation that we are building together. Uh, how? of our liberation. Yes, thank you. Uh, we know how we have achieved the gains. We know what we have put in place so that we achieve the gains. And if we have put in place, we keep on improving on it. We keep on asking people to be accountable of what they are given. We keep on reconciling and uniting Rwandans. We keep on educating the youth. We keep on emancipating women. We keep on uh, developing in different sectors. Uh, in that way, we shall sustain what we have gained. We shall even achieve more. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Frank, your yeah. last thoughts. Yeah, first of all, is, uh, we have to put more efforts in eradicating uh, the eradication of poverty, because uh, with poverty uh, still out there, work harder, then I think people will be able to, uh, to appreciate what we have and to sustain what we have. Of course, the issues that are mentioned in the Constitution, the fundamental principles have to be um, enforced, and issues of pluralism, political pluralism, uh, has to be enforced. Democracy, democratic governance, uh, rule of law, uh, those are the, I think, the things that people of Rwanda really need much. Of course, I don't want to forget issue of security. Yes. We have to uh, support our men in uniform to make sure that they still safeguard us from all uh, either, uh, all types of attacks. Now we have even new attacks from the space, from cyber, yes. from what, but also have those physical attacks from uh, different even countries the, and so the, on. The, and the pandemics. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. we have to have maximum yeah. security for our country and uh, we have to support our our men in uniform, of course, I mentioned before, that I will take this opportunity to mention it, that uh, uh, the government should put more efforts to increase salaries for our soldiers and our policemen and all men. And also the because the, our soldiers have the, this army shop, the police, uh, so I think the teachers deserve also to have that. So, I mean, all these things, if we put them in, uh, into, um, we put them together, they will help us to sustain our country, our development and our liberation, and then we'll be sure that our grandchildren and great, great, grandchildren will live in a secure country. Thank you very much. Uh, MP Frank Abineza, President of Democratic Green Party of Rwanda in an opposition political organization operating here in Rwanda. Uh, MP Francisca Tenjera, a member of parliament and also a member of the ruling RPF in Otanyi. Of course, I had Jacques Aigamba joining us uh, from London, uh, a consultant in human 
um, rights and development. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And of course, I cannot thank you enough, you who have been watching us from wherever you are in Rwanda and all over the world. You know, the, the discussion just began, and we'll be having these discussions on a regular basis of looking at how far we've, we've come as a nation, where we are, and where we want to go in terms of liberating ourselves, not you know, militarily or picking up the arms and fight, but also uh, liberating our minds, our ideas, and, 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 and everything that we need to liberate and to move forward as a nation. I want to thank you so much, and of course, on behalf of the entire team that has helped me to put this together, including my director, Shema. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ethan Tashibia. Until next time, bye for now.